Hello, welcome to another video from EGIS Associates. Today we're going to be taking a look at how do we georeference AutoCAD files, DWGs, inside of ArcGIS Pro. And um, this is a pretty common practice, and if you've done it before in ArcMap, it's not that much different in ArcGIS Pro. If you've never done it before, it's not a hard thing to do. And the reason we do this is a lot of the files we get that come in an AutoCAD format, typically from engineers or surveyors or landscape architects and whatnot, uh, are not georeferenced, meaning they're not in a real world coordinate system. So when we try to bring them into RGIS, they often come in, well, down at zero, zero or never, never land, just nowhere near where it needs to be. And so we can, using tools in ArcGIS Pro, bring that drawing up to where it needs to be so it fits within our GIS data. So we'll now look and see how that process works inside of ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so I'm now in ArcGIS Pro. I already have a project open with a map. And what I have, if I go over here into Catalog, I've got a subdivision here that has parcels that I need to bring in and create inside of um, my parcel data set here. Basically, I want to update this parcel layer so that it includes this new subdivision. So I'm going to bring in the drawing file. Now, you can bring in the entire drawing, but I just really need the, the lines. So that's going to be what I bring in. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and just drag it into my map. And it, it comes in. And if I go ahead and zoom to the layer so you can see where it has come in at, See, it's coming in down here, and if you look at the very bottom of the map down here, you'll see the uh, coordinate readout. And you can see that it's down there at, uh, looks like roughly 500,000 and 500,000. So it's down here really in Never Never Land, doesn't line up with the photography at all, and certainly is not lining up with my data. So certainly need to georeference this. So what I'm going to do is I already know where the subdivision belongs. So that's the first step is knowing where does this go within your data set. I've already done that. So uh, I'm going to go to my map and the bookmark that I've already got established for that location. You can see this parent parcel right here. And I'll go ahead and make sure that it is selectable so you can see which one I'm referring to. So it's this parcel right here that you see highlighted in blue. So this is the original parent parcel that has been subdivided and that I want to update with the data I have in my AutoCAD drawing that I got from the surveyor that designed the subdivision. So uh, next thing I want to do is get this drawing so it appears at least close to where I need it to, to be. So I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit on this, get myself uh, more centered. And then up here with the AutoCAD drawing layer selected, you'll see that a new tab has appeared in my ribbon, um, the CAD layer manage tab. So if I click on it, you can see there's a button up here called georeference. So when I click it, it's now going to open the georeferencing tab in the ribbon. So this is a new tab that just appeared by clicking on that button. And the first thing I want to do, as I said, is get that CAD file so it appears right up here where it belongs, or at least close to it. So you'll see um, in the prepare group, there's a move to display. So this is going to shift the AutoCAD file up into this general area. So I'm going to click it. And now you can see in orange that the CAD file has appeared up here in the general location of where it needs to be. So the next thing I need to do is pick control points that match the CAD file to my GIS data. And so well, let's get rid of this little warning that's telling me it's missing a spatial reference. Uh, so get rid of that because that's really annoying. So I need to pick two points that match up between the CAD file and my GIS data. And I zoomed out a little bit here and recentered so I could kind of do that. Now, the best method to do this, or the, the best locations to pick control points, is those that are kind of diagonal from one another. 
when you georeference a CAD file in ArcGIS Pro, just like in ArcMap, you can only pick two points. So we want to pick two points that we can uh, easily identify between the data. So uh, it looks like the corners, I could pick the corners. So I want to pick this southwestern corner, and then I'm going to go with this northeastern corner. So I'm going to start down here at the southwest, zoom in a little bit so I make sure that I'm picking the right locations. Then I'm going to go up here to add control points. I'm going to click that uh, tool up here in the ribbon, go down and pick on the location of my CAD file first. And you notice it is snapping. You do want to make sure your snapping is enabled. So I'm going to click so I'm getting that intersection. And now I'm going to match to my GIS data. Again, making sure I'm snapping to the right location uh, in here. So I'll zoom in a little bit more and make sure that I'm snapping to that right location right there. So you can see the red uh, circle with the X in it on the CAD file matches to the green circle with the X in it in my GIS data. So that's the first control point. So I'm going to zoom back out a little bit and then pan up. Well, I'm going to pan up if it's going to cooperate with me. There we go. And zoom in on this northeastern corner. Again, verify I have the control points tool selected. I'm going to snap to the intersection here in my CAD file. And then to the intersection of my GIS data. Click that. So again, the red and the green uh, targets appear. And I'm going to zoom back out. And pan a little bit more so we can see how we've done. Okay. Oops. Zoomed a little bit too much. There we go. So now that I've picked those two control points, I can hit apply. And you can see now that CAD file snaps right into place where it needs to be. Okay. This point I want to save this. And what that's going to do, when I click the Save button, it's going to generate a world file for that CAD file so that any other drawing, or I'm sorry, any other maps that I use that drawing in, it's going to come in in the right location. It's also going to generate a, a PRJ file or projection file that lets ArcGIS Pro and or even ArcMap know what coordinate system this CAD file has been georeferenced to. So I'm going to click Save to that. And now that I've gotten that in there, it's right where it needs to be. So at this point, I could then use this um, data to do several things. I could say update, uh, for example, the property lines layer with this. I could, uh, by doing that, let me clear my selection and go in and now set this. So first, I'm just going to start. So the only thing that is selectable are the lines from the CAD file and go to my edit tab go select select the file the lines out of the CAD file that I want with that go up here to copy then go over here to paste hit the drop down and hit paste special choose the layer that I want it to go into being the property lines and go OK. So and now you can see over here in the contents pane that there are now 146 property lines selected. So I successfully copied those lines over. If I turn off the CAD file, turn that off, go ahead and clear my selection real quick. You can see the property lines. Let me change the color so there's something different than what the CAD file happened to be. We'll make them red just so they stand out. So you can see that copied that over. The other, other thing I could do if I didn't care about the lines and I just needed to split the parent parcel out into the individual parcels for the subdivision, do that too. So again, make sure that that's the only thing that is selectable and want to make sure that um, the parcels are editable. So notice I've got parcels listed as the only editable layer. You don't have to do this. This is just 
for safety, make sure I don't accidentally edit another layer. Uh, also notice the exclamation point out here to the right of the layer name that indicates that that layer is non-editable and it's because it's the AutoCAD file we brought in. So with that I just want to use these AutoCAD lines to split the original parent parcel into the new subdivided parcels. So again I'm going to go up here to my select tool, select those um, CAD lines like so. Go to my edit tab here and go to the split tool and I'm going to do this split by feature. So this is a new function that was added in, I believe it was a 2.3 version of ArcGIS Pro. So my um, input features, oops, I should have already selected those, are going to be my CAD lines. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those. There we go. They're now selecting. You see them kind of appearing in these dashed lines. My target is going to be the, the original parcel that I want to split. So I'm going to click in there. Oops, got to make sure that's layer selectable. There we go. So it's now selectable. And now that's highlighted with the, the um, hashed fill pattern there. So you can tell that that's the parcel that's selected. Now with those, with the CAD line selected and then my target selected, I'm now going to hit split. And it runs the, the tool. And now notice that I have 166 parcel polygons selected. So that would be all of the parcels that are now in there. And again, if I clear that selection, turn off the CAD file, then you can see the individual parcels that have been split out using the CAD data. At which point then I would hit save my edits. So there you go. It's just as easy as that. Now that same process will work not only with AutoCAD DWG files, but also with DXF files or even MicroStation DGN files. The same basic process will also work if you have a raster file, a scanned plat, an aerial photo, a scanned map, whatever. Uh, the difference being that with a raster file like that, you can actually uh, pick more than two control points. You can pick as many control points as you want and choose what type of transformation you use with that. But as I said, really, if you get a CAD file that needs georeferencing, it is as simple as that process we just went through. And then from there, you can do all kinds of things with the data once you get it in the right place. So hopefully you found that very helpful. Remember, if you need any other assistance with your GIS, whether it's implementation or strategic planning or even you know, assistance with staffing or training, support, any of those kind of things, we're certainly here to help you. And we have a vast array of e expertise that we can really uh, assist you with uh, if you need it. So if you have any questions or you need some help or you want some training, please reach out and contact us. I've got our contact information here. www.egisassociates.com is our website. Uh, you can give us a call at 678-710-9710 or email us at info at egisassociates.com. Of course, remember, if you like what you see here, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when we get new updates and new videos get posted. And of course, leave comments if, if there's something else you want to know more about or you like what you see or, or whatnot. Uh, we do have our contest still going. We're still trying to get to those 2,000 subscribers. So we're up over 1,500 now. So we're, we're getting closer every day. So make sure you get in there before we hit that magic number so you can be eligible to win some prizes when we do hit 2,000 subscribers. Of course, um, please feel free to uh, connect with us on Patreon. You know, Help us become better at what we do by giving us some more resources through that. And then if you really like us, you want to be one of the cool kids, get your EGIS merchandise through our merchandise store. So with that, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks.